Hi. Um, quite often I get asked by clients and non-clients, just people in general, about how many times should I mail my donors, particularly when we're looking at direct mail. How many times should I communicate with my donors? So that's what we're going to look at today. So how many times should I mail my donors? Very simple question, but not such a simple answer. Um, what we normally do is we make a decision based on our perception of the number of times we think we should mail our donors based on what we think our donors would like. And that's probably the wrong thing to look at. What we actually should be looking at is what is the econ economics of mailing my donors? How many times should I mail my donors to maximize lifetime value? So that, how can I make the maximum amount of net income in the long term? So what I actually do is I look at some data, I look at some maths, and what we can see is generally speaking, if I just draw a nice little chart here, where I've got the number of campaigns here on the horizontal axis, and I've got the amount of money that I'm going to make out of uh, those people um, in the, uh, through those appeals. What I've got is sort of, as I increase the number of appeals per year, I've got a relatively linear increase in cost, because I'm assuming that my appeals are more or less the same price per, uh, per unit. So in other words, if I do twice as many appeals, I uh, pay twice as much money. But when I look at the income, what I see is the income tends to increase in a non-linear fashion in that as I do more and more mailings, it actually makes not quite as much money each time. So I end up with this sort of curve like this. So if I go from um, this number of mailings to this number of mailings, so I'm doubling my mailings, I'll pretty much double my costs. Um, not quite on there, but it should be about double my costs. But when I actually look at the income, I'll increase my income from there to there. So this is the cumulative income. So you can see that I've got a cost increase of a little bit and an income increase of quite a lot. So I definitely should increase my number of mailings. Now, if I increase my number of mailings from this number to this number, my costs increase by this bit and my income increases by this bit. And as you can see from that rough sketch, they're about the same. So I probably shouldn't bother doing that mailing. My limit of number of mailings is probably a little bit before then. So what I'm actually doing here is I'm finding that as I increase the number of mailings, I'm getting less and less money per mailing, but I'm still making more money per mailing. Now for the long term, we know that recency and frequency um, from RFV or RFM, so recency and frequency, how recent and how often people have given is the best indicator of whether they're going to give to me again. So that means that I know that the more people I've actually got giving, the more people I'm going to keep giving. So in the long term, the more money I make out of people in one year means the more money they're going to probably give me into the future. Okay, that's just the way it works. It's not mercenary or anything. That's just the same if we were selling wine or any other um, kind of fast-moving uh, good or anything like that. It's just the way it works. So what this tells me is that I shouldn't be mailing loads and loads and loads of times because it's going to cost me about the same to increase the number of mailings, but I might at some point not make much, any more money. But I'm probably not mailing enough. And the actual number of mailings, so in Australia we see that charities on average um, mail about four times a year, and that's almost certainly down here, far too low. Um, four times is going to be too low. What we actually want to be doing is mailing a lot more. But that number is going to depend to some extent on how many donors that you've got. Because the more donors that you've got, then the more cost effective each and every mailing is, so the more mailings you can do. So if you had 100,000 donors, you could probably get away with 10, 12 or 15 mailings a year and make some real money. Whereas if you've only got, say, 5,000 donors, then maybe four is probably about the right amount, maybe six um, if you can find a way of doing some very clever follow-ups. So the main point here is the number of mailings is going to be driven by economics, um, and that's the economics of the cost of the pack, the cost of your staff, the cost of the time taken to do this when you're not doing something else, not donor fatigue. Okay, so everyone talks about donor fatigue, and it's actually not about donor fatigue, it's all about the economics of mailings. Okay, so how many times should I mail my donors? It's going to depend on how many donors you've got and how much it costs to produce a pack.